So we've, you've talked about the major deals that were struck and the, the, the millions of dollars that were pledged at the summit. And um, that's a lot of money clearly coming into Africa. So me as a young person, how can I position myself to make sure that I benefit from, from that trickling down to me? Okay, so any commitment that was signed or that is signed, let's use the EU, for example, on green hydrogen. Any commitment that is signed there is always a channel through which it will be disbursed. So it's either disbursed through the multilateral banks, like your Africa Development Bank, from a continental level, or it's disbursed through governments in terms of, especially if it's government to government. Sometimes that funding could be disbursed through donors, you know, channel they channel them through donors. So one of the things, the first step you need to know is follow the money, as they say, in terms of nowhere that funding is. But before you even start there, let's take a step back to what exactly is your idea. Because any funding that comes in is addressing a specific area. For example, the EU is focused on green hydrogen. But if you're not in green hydrogen space, and that's why I'm encouraging many young people to not just think around tree planting, that's great. But then think around what are the innovations or inputs that will be fed into the green hydrogen space that is maybe just a chip or a, a small factor that could be a significant requirement for the whole green hydrogen, uh, for example, value chain or, or, or projects. That one piece could be your entry into a higher level as opposed to playing at the lower level stage. So what exactly is your solution, first of all? If it's in the agriculture space, in the climate uh, smart agriculture space, some people are playing at the level of the food space. Others, it's data collection, you know. Uh, others is also around um, fertilizer or others it's just around different inputs like feeds for example and even amongst around the agricultural space there are different value chains and like i said any money that comes in let's say it goes into agriculture there could be a portion that goes into data so if you're in the data space you begin to think what data is required in the agricultural space that way you then position to who exactly is funding the agricultural space and go into that space Follow that lead because when it comes to climate, there are very many segments. It cuts across everything, including education, including um, areas that you'd not think of, maybe like the creatives, you know, the different fundings that come in for different purposes. And a, a good example is the World Bank funding under the locally led, financially financing locally led climate um, change solutions. And these are initiatives that are being sought after in partnership with county governments. They're looking for ideas at the county level that would then be funded by the funding that has already been provided to county governments. It's 49 billion. Many Kenyans probably don't even know about it, but then it is already availed and committed to the county governments over a period of time. If you're a young person, you must be in one of these counties, right? So you need to know and get in touch with your county governments to know what exactly is this FLOCA program. That's how it's called in short. How do I position myself to benefit from it? That's one way. There's other funding that's, for example, around the carbon markets. You, you, you can't benefit from funding that is specifically ring-fenced around uh, carbon markets if you're not playing in the carbon market space. So you have to know, first of all, what exactly is carbon markets, what are the value chains around carbon markets, and how do I play a role there so that I can be able to benefit. So. And there are then different types of funding. There is investment in terms of um, actual return, you know, uh, uh, interest-based investments. And then there's also social impact, which is more of grants and you know donor donations that are given to support either ideas or to facilitate programs that help achieve the overall objective, which is decarbonization. But by all means, start with acquiring knowledge in terms of information. That's part of what we're trying to do as Jacobs Ladder Africa, because we realize that there's a gap. There are many people who are hearing things but are not able to decipher what exactly it means for them. So start with information and knowledge. Then secondly, start with what exactly, what idea or what space are you passionate about? And then find a way of skewing it towards addressing the climate change solution. And then you will discover as you and then the other way you could actually benefit is also joining communities because there are many communities. That's part of why the Africa Youth Climate Assembly was successful because they were leveraging on existing communities of young people who are already doing different things. There are many groups of young people that are planting trees, others that are in climate tech and they support each other. There are others that are in agriculture. There are others that are doing something here and there, but they are already in communities. Join a community that helps you to be able to know what's going 
on and then leverage on other people's networks as well. But then ultimately have a solution that will stand out amongst the rest because that way there are many donors and investors that are looking for brilliant ideas. And then finally, because I am a champion of job creation and supporting young entrepreneurs, if you do have a brilliant idea and you, you feel absolutely lost even after all this, do write us on info at jacobsnada.africa. We will be able to guide you. Even if we don't have the specific answer to your problem, we can definitely guide you to the right direction on how to proceed. And I think and hope that that has answered the question of the young person who's seeking to know how to play in this space.